Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Jason Phillips. He's a Simpson County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Joanna. Now, Jason, every year when we get to thinking this time of year, we think of some weeds that are out there that we might not need to control. And a lot of times we don't think about them until maybe it's past the point that we really need to be looking at them and controlling them. But one that we always deal with is perilla mint. Right. I've had a lot of questions about perilla mint and, you know, um, I've certainly seen some cases where it, it attributed or, or caused death in, in cattle, namely. Uh, any livestock, though, it's, it's toxic to any livestock. And so explain what that plant looks like. It's very distinct. Yeah, Perilla mint is a true mint. It's in the mint family. And so if you crumble up the leaves and smell of it, it's going to smell like mint. But uh, oftentimes it's in shadier areas. Uh, around your pasture. It's got a square stem and uh, the top side of the leaves are green and the bottom side are dark like a purplish color. Mm -hmm. And so if you if you walk around to the shadier areas that's where you're gonna find it. And you know a lot of times producers didn't put extra fertilizer on just because of the high fertilizer price and most of the time cattle will avoid it. But if there's nothing else to eat in that area. That's the biggest thing. In the late summer months when forage forages get low and limited then that's when we see issues with perilla mint. There's just not much out much left out there to eat mm -hmm. and so then they start trying other things and uh, it can cause lots of respiratory issues but I have seen cases where it where it has killed killed cattle. And you know in the summer it's hot and they're spending a little bit more time in those shaded areas and you know they're if you think about it when we're hot we don't want to walk a real far away to go right. get food and water as well and they're kind of the same way so they get a little bit more curious and maybe they're willing to try things that they yeah. wouldn't normally try. Yeah maybe a little bit more prone to just you know go a short piece stay in the shade and try something they wouldn't try. Also younger animals you know are more more likely to uh, not know what to eat and to experiment a little bit and of course it can kill them. They're a little more curious yeah. too and the thing about it is they have to eat so much a percentage of their body weight for them to die but with a calf a percentage of their body weight's not that much. Right it doesn't take near as much to get there and so certainly it's something we need to be able to identify but we also need to be able to uh, control or limit options for us to have issues with those. So how, what is the control methods? I mean, can we just mow it and, and so it doesn't set seed or how does, how does that plant grow? You can mow it. Um, May through July is the preferred time to treat with a herbicide. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, here we are, the plant's gotten larger, it's pretty tough. Um, so, I mean, you may have to make a couple of applications in order to control it. Also, obviously, we got to have a certain amount of shade out there in our pastures, but you could also, it, it loves shade. And so, you know, you got to figure out, well, do I need that shade? Is that unnecessary? You know, maybe you got more than you need. You could remove some of the shade. Yeah, but if you have it there this year, and you don't take some type of control method, you're probably going to get it there again next year. Oh, yes. If it's there and you don't do anything, it'll be back. And, um, you know, it would be a ideal that you would treat in, in May. So try to bear that in mind for next year, too, to get out there when the plants are small, when summer annuals are small, and treat, you know, at, when it's still little. It's a lot easier before it gets tough and stemmy. Yeah, because now, I mean, those plants are somewhat mature, um, and it might take a little bit more herbicide mm -hmm. if you try to treat that now, but it, we can see it now. Right. You know, it's out mm -hmm. there. It, it has a different texture to the leaf. It's almost like ripply and ruffly, mm -hmm. um, but when it's small, it's hard to detect, but I would encourage people to mark off where it is in that area and then try to get that early, and then you have to use less herbicide. Right, right. And, you know, you could always use some temporary fencing or something like that to keep cattle from getting getting to it if you notice it. So we've got some publications that are going to tell you, you know, what's going to work the best and going to be the most effective on Perilla Mint. All right. Well, Jason, certainly appreciate the information. If you need help identifying Perilla Mint or maybe some control methods, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.